So a lot of you probably remember the days back before all the synergies and back before Rune Words absolutely took over Diablo 2. And that's what we're talking about here. A nostalgic look back at the old items of yesteryear. The items that nowadays you find them and you're not particularly excited. But back in the day, you probably would have crapped your pants if one of these fell off a of Diablo. Now first off, I'm doing a lot of this from memory, so feel free to head down in the comments of any items that maybe you think I forgot or should have definitely made the list. Like I said, I'm not copying off of some other website's list that they had made or someone else's video. This is all coming straight from up here. And also, I'm not including any glitched or hacked type of items on here. Strictly legit type of items that you would actually find when playing. Now first up is a unique item. Of course it's going to be a unique item because RuneWords completely almost eliminated most unique items here in Diablo 2 and this is also for a type of build that isn't used nearly as often now but was absolutely godly back in the day and that is the grandfather that would absolutely slap on that whirlwind barbarian this item is incredibly incredibly rare and now that the whirlwind barbarian just isn't quite as good as it used to be along with the way that obviously grief took over for every single melee character in the game the grandfather has just fallen to the wayside it's not nearly as exciting to find unless it's one of those items you're searching to get on your single player holy grail but back in the day this was an absolutely god tier item and a legendary trophy item next up is kind of a budget version that was used back in the day on those whirlwind barbarians instead of the grandfather because let's be honest normal mortals like me and you probably couldn't find ourselves a grandfather maybe you did let me know in the comments but i was lucky enough back in the day eventually get my hands on one of these a hell slayer nowadays obviously there's absolutely no reason to use this with how crazy the budget even rune words are but back in the day all that percent to maximum damage was absolutely god tier and we'll keep going with one more for that whirlwind barbarian there's a quite a few here but remember this whirlwind barbarian back in the day was absolutely amazing and that is a ccbq or a ccbe now those are cruel colossus blade of quickness or the e would stand for evisceration myself i got lucky enough to almost find one of these i actually picked up and identified a bullrog blade and it ended up being a cruel bullrog blade of evisceration unfortunately much like today if an item isn't absolutely perfect people don't want to give you nothing for it and the colossus blade was the most desired one probably because of the attack speed nowadays these pretty much aren't even fun because let's be honest when's the last time you picked up a colossus blade that was blue just to see what rolled on it i've been searching to find stuff like this on single player just for a goofy, funny kind of trophy item. Haven't found one yet, though. All right, we'll jump off of that Whirlwind Barbarian and move on to a caster item. Now, let's see. Nowadays, you're obviously going to be using a Spirit Shield, but that rune word wasn't around all the time. What did everybody use back in the day? Well, one option that a lot of people use, and it's actually an incredibly budget item, you can find pretty early on if you get lucky. That is the Lidless Wall. Now, it's essentially like half of a spirit shield it's got one to all skills instead of two it's got 20 faster cast rate instead of that 25 to 35 it's missing that res but what you do add on there is that two mana after kill so this was a great option for obviously sorceresses and that mana after kill went great with a javazan as well also boosting up that lightning fury damage the one to all skill and we'll talk about another shield. This could be used on casters, but this one may be a little bit more on melee. And it also, it is still used nowadays, but I do want to mention it because it was almost like a myth back in the day, to me anyways. And that was the Storm Shield. I'm not sure this is exactly how it was, but in my brain anyways, it seemed like we used to be way more focused on survivability than they are nowadays. So obviously the Storm Shield is known for that, and it's got a huge amount of damage reduction. So we talk about it a few times more down the list, but that damage reduction was absolutely key back in the day. Next up is one that's kind of making a revival with Terror Zones, but that's actually two to skill amulets, more specifically two to skill rare amulets. Now back in the day, I don't remember if there wasn't crafting super early on. Feel free to hit me up in the comments to let me know. I know it went through a little bit of a change with the recipes. Maybe the recipes were too hard to do back in the day around the 08, 09 patch, but you could find two to skill amulets at a much lower level than you could now. Since the amulets have to be level 90 or higher, you could pretty much only find them off of Diablo, Neolithic, or Bale up until the introduction of Terror Zones here. Now, obviously, you can find two to skill amulets all over the place, as long as you're in a Terror Zone. But I used to find them all the time just in places like, we'll say, the Cow Games. So instead of the crafted caster amulets, like nowadays, those rare amulets 
were the absolute go-to with two to a character skill. Now next up, when I talked about the Storm Shell, I did mention that damage reduction was key back in the day. That was everybody's go-to. So you're probably not going to be surprised by this item. You've seen it on every single Amazon at minimum, and that was the Shaft Stop. There you get a bunch of life, you get a bunch of damage reduction, and that was essentially what everybody was looking for. You've seen this black armor, like I said, every bow is on and every single job is on, along with a lot of other characters. I did slap one on my Barbarian as well. And the next one's kind of a combo. It was what every single Amazon would wear on their head. And remember back in the day, Boazons were crazy, Javazons were crazy. So there were a ton, ton, ton of Amazons running around everywhere. And this combo one for all the helmets, you either went with a Vamp Gaze, once again, damage reduction, the Life Leech and such, or you went with the Valk Helm back in the day. Now getting those skills and to mana after kill was absolutely crucial on a Javazon. Nowadays, they're kind of mana hogs, and even back in the day, they were too. Getting the mana after kill on the Lidless, getting more mana after kill on the Velkhelm, really would help you out in the cow game. And yeah, the V-Gaze, of course, continuing that idea of survivability, getting more damage reduction there, up on your helmet. And while we're talking about the Amazon, and I did mention the Boazons were sick back in the day, I'm going to mention another one, much like the Grandfather, that was almost like a myth. You never actually found it, but you always heard maybe... Someone here and there did find one, and that is the Wind Force. Now, the Wind Force, of course, is still good nowadays. It's right up there in the conversation with one of the best. But back in the day, honestly, people weren't even sure it existed. It was so rare. This was one of those items that would literally go for hundreds of dollars on eBay. And yeah, eBay was around in its infancy, but man, literally hundreds of dollars this item would go for. And like I said, since Boazons were so much more powerful back then, this was in crazy, crazy high demand. Now, if you couldn't get yourself a Wind Force, which of course I couldn't, I was some kid who didn't know what I was doing. There was a more budget option that was still in very high demand. Nowadays, absolutely worthless. But back then, since Boazons were so good, and since there was a 100% pierce glitch for the guided arrow, you could slap yourself on a Burrs and absolutely wreck down stuff with that. Now, this infinite guided arrow glitch is the guided arrow would go through a monster and because it was guided, it would turn around and come back through the monster again and again and again. And you would just have them going back and forth and you would just absolutely melt individual monsters with that burrs. That's why they were so in demand. Not to mention the wind force was almost impossible to find. So this was another great option. So what are some of your favorites that back in the day were worth a ton and now aren't worth anything at all? It's a nice, fun, nostalgic look back at history. Peace out, fellas, and don't forget, keep slaying.